Radiation has many uses. It can investigate engineering products, kill cancer cells, and shadow your bones. But you're going to need protection if you use it all the time, whether that be the world's heaviest door or that nice little weighted blanket they give you at the dentist. I just think that's so nice. But let's be honest. These solutions are pretty primitive. What if radiation shielding wasn't just big rectangles? What if it could be any shape? Yes, I'm talking about 3D printing radiation shielding. It's here. And it's dense, baby. Like me. Now entering the facility. We begin with a question. What makes something a good radiation shield? Well, technically anything can be a radiation shield, but some materials will be better than others. That's why we'll start by looking at a material's density. You see, radiation is made up of photons and particles, and so the more stuff in a certain volume that gets in its way, the less likely it is for radiation to make it through. I, I'm not radioactive now. Am I glowing? Psych, things like this don't glow. I taught you that. Get wrecked. Like we said, since radiation has to actually traverse nanoscopic environments, the more stuff you have in the same volume, the more dense the material, the better shield it is. And so as far as materials go, some volume of water is not as good a shield as some volume of concrete, which is not as protective as iron, as lead, as tungsten, or as uranium. This is the simplest way to look at radiation protection, but not the most informative. Our discussion could get a lot denser, you might say. Do you ever go outside? No. Why? Do you? Uh, I'm a neural network. <laughs> Thought so. Get wrecked. Radiation protection is actually an immensely complicated field of study, if for no other reason than that there are so many potential variables. The type of radiation, alpha, beta, sigma male, giga chad, neutron, makes a difference, as does the material you're using, as does what you're trying to shield in the first place. For example, while it is generally true that denser material, material with higher Z numbers, is the better shield, that's not true for every kind of radiation. Lead, for example, is good at blocking photons and charged particles, but that's because that radiation interacts electrically, and inside lead there's a lot of heavy stuff and electrons to interact electrically with. But neutrons, like those that fly out of a nuclear reactor, are electrically neutral, and so they don't get stopped in the same way. Instead, for neutrons, you need to stop them with similarly sized nuclei. You need to take advantage of the conservation of momentum and smack them into other stuff like smacking billiard balls together. And guess what has a similar mass as a neutron and therefore makes a good shield? Hydrogen. That's why you'll see water in a spent nuclear fuel pool and not an equal amount of lead. We could get even more specific here and talk about breaking radiation and linear attenuation and cross-sections and coefficients and stopping power, but for our purposes, we can stop here. If you know what kind of radiation you're dealing with, a quick way to compare different materials is with what scientists call the half thickness or half value layer of a material. It's the amount of material that you need to reduce the intensity of some radiation hitting it by half. And as you can see, if you're using the right stuff, you don't need all that much of it. Heck, just a meter or so of dirt can serve as a quick and dirty radiation fallout shelter in the event of nuclear war. Sounds like a pretty alpha thing to do. <laughs> no, Arya, you don't want to be an alpha male. Least amount of penetrating power. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Delete Me. Gamers. I'm award-winning science educator and Jason Momoa if you had pocket sand thrown in your face, Kyle Hill. You know, it seems like there's a new data breach every single day, doesn't it? Who has my data this time? Hackers? Scammers? Steve? Today, it's more important than ever to have your personal data on lockdown and eliminated from the clutches of these rep scallions. That's why I use today's sponsor, Delete Me. Delete Me is a service that makes it quick, easy, and safe to remove your personal data online. Just submit for removal from search engines and data broker sites, and then Delete Me experts find and remove your personal information regularly all year long. More than 20% of the Fortune 500 and dozens of government agencies and nonprofits rely on Delete Me to keep their information private. Just look at how much of my information Delete Me found and then removed from the clutches of the information monetizing, attention siphoning machine that is the internet. That's a lot. Too much, you might say. 
If you want to keep your personal data personal like me, go to the link down in the description, enter this URL on screen, or peep this QR code with your emptiness machine, and use the code KYLE20OFF for 20% off a Delete Me consumer plan. That's KYLE20OFF. Look, scammers like Steve can't get your personal data if it doesn't exist there in the first place. <laughs> Delete yourself. Delete Me is the company. As we've seen, tungsten is one of the best radio protective materials that we have. That's where this 3D printer and this experimental new filament comes in. This is the original Prusa Mark IV 3D printer. Prusa sent it to me because they have come up with a tungsten-infused filament specifically for radiation shielding. So many words that I like in that one sentence. The 75% tungsten filament works with their normal printer, outfitted with a specialized nozzle. They made the filament after being asked for potential radiation shielding solutions in the medical field. The filament specifically shields X and gamma rays and has the medically relevant benefit of being both non-reactive and non-toxic. Prusa has tested it and determined the half thickness values we talked about and has already come up with some very clever applications, like a tungsten sleeve for medical syringes that carry radioisotopes. Prusa also points out that while they have started with the medical applications in mind, they think that this new filament could be of use to the whole Rad Pro industry. It's expensive niche stuff, yes, but it's already being used by professionals for shields of sizes and shapes and orientations that would be impossible to buy off the shelf. But like good scientists, this isn't going to be really interesting to us unless we can do the experiment ourselves and get the same radio protective results. So let's print some radiation shielding and uh, see if it shields us. And many, many hours later, I have this. A miniature 3D printed demon core, this time out of tungsten. Really? You printed the demon core? Yes, I 3D printed the demon core, Aria. What better way to talk about radiation shielding than with an infamous object that killed two physicists? <sighs> and you know what the fun part is? This hole here, where the demon core would usually go, perfectly fits my sample of uranium. So we are going to do an experiment. We are going to put the uranium inside the demon core here, unshielded, take a reading at a certain distance, and then shield it to see how the shielding functions as uh, shielding. I place the uranium ore first. Then, using our radiocode Geiger counter, I'm gonna go a certain distance away and take a reading, and I'm not gonna move. You can see that this is a spicy boy at about 1.3. I should say this rate right now is many times higher than background. Now what we're gonna do is maintain the exact same orientation we have, and I am going to shield the demon core with the rest of the demon core. Down, down, down we go. Success. I just wanna point out again how much distance matters when you're talking about radiation protection. TDS, right? Time distance shielding. Well, look at the difference. 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and then I'm gonna move still within the frame of this camera. And it's gonna cut more than in half with just that little amount of distance. Stay safe out there, people. Well, that's 3D printed radiation shielding, all right, but I don't plan on tickling the dragon's tail anytime soon. Too many Kevins died last year. Way too many Kevins died last year, Arya. So instead, how about, in addition to this, we print, say, a nuclear cask for all of my radioactive trinkets that I have. It's gotta be better than how I have been storing them. Here is my little radiation cask that I built out of the new Prusa tungsten filament. And inside, I'm gonna place a few of my trinkets. I'm going to place my sample of Trinitite, straight from the Trinity explosion. I'm gonna put some pottery from Fukushima that I acquired. I'm gonna put just a little bit of cesium-137 contaminated mushroom from Chernobyl in there, and of course, the sample of uranium that we put previously. 
Once again, we are going to take our radiocode dosimeter and take a reading. Point 0.8. Man, I don't want that near my internal organs for 30 years. So we have about 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And now let us test the efficacy of my 3D printed cask. So already cut it more than in half. And if we're being super safe, we use this container and we move it away from us. Time distance shielding, remember? And there you have it. With our 3D printed tungsten cask, you can get rates that are barely above background even though you have stuff in there that you didn't tell everybody about. Haha, <laughs> safe and sound. I know many of you watching are actually in the nuclear industry. So if you can think of any other applications for this cool new filament, leave a comment below. Prusa will be watching and who knows, maybe they'll make it or send you some. In the meantime, I'll be using this Prusa printer for very important stuff. Are those, are you printing radiation proof underwear behind no, you? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying to be safe until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility. I shouldn't be holding this this close to my internal organs for that long. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Especially thank you again to Prusa for sending me their wonderful Mark IV printer. I love printing on this thing. In fact, I've been printing everything and anything that I can think of. The resolution is crazy. Highly recommend if you are an enthusiast. But if you want to join the facility and drape on a silky watt lab cart, go to the link on Aria right now for videos early, private members only live streams, all that good shish kebab. And if you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria in every single video. <laughs> oh, and there's so many of you, I don't know how I'm gonna pass the 10. Now I should say that with regards to 3D printing radiation shielding, not everything has been solved by Prusa just yet. It's not totally economical. I should say that although this filament is very cool, just one spool of this cool filament stuff is hundreds of dollars. So unless you have specific niche known applications that you want to mess around with or experiment around with, this might not be the best consumer thing to just buy and try out. And you need a specialized nozzle and it can get kind of droopy because it's so heavy. So you might not have. What I'm trying to say is that I appreciate Prusa taking the research time to apply themselves to a very cool, very specific application, but it may not be for every user if you want to get your hands on this stuff. But it is very fun to, for example, print like a tiny Thor's hammer. It's like deceptively heavy. You don't have to be fully worthy, just a little bit worthy. <laughs> Thanks for watching.